Section 4 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 2 The Associations of Normal Subjects. Part 3. 2. Special Classification. Capital A. Inner Association. Footnote 1. Zian, Leitfaden der Physiologischen Psychology, page 141, in a polemic against inner association, quotes the following examples. Lust, brust. Herz, schmerz. English equivalents would be pain, brain. Heart, part. Translator. Remarking that the so-called inner association is purely outer and limited almost entirely to auditory presentations of similar-sounding words. It is very easy to grant see in this, for nobody would designate these as examples of inner association. For the rest, with Wundt, we conceive the associative affinity as the principle of inner, and practice as the principle of outer associations. Or, similarity equals inner association, contiguity equals outer association. End of footnote 1. Lowercase a. Coordination. Under this heading, we classify all associations which are in any way united by coadjunction, subordination, supraordination, or contrast. The association experiments require the following special classification of coordinations. Alpha. Coadjunction. The two terms are united by an essential similarity. That is to say, they are formulated upon some more general concept in which both are included. Examples. Word, lake. Reaction, sea. General concept, mass of water. Word, cherry. Reaction, apple. General concept, fruit. Word, long. Reaction, small. General concept, measurement. Word, unjust. Reaction, faithlessness. General concept, wrong or vicious. The association by coadjunction need not always be a mere shifting of an obvious common superconcept, but can also result from a more or less vague similarity. The similarity can be so close as to be scarcely differentiated from identity, as, e.g., indulgence, forbearance, friendly, amiable, hair, thread. But the similarity can be very remote so that what is common to the two presentations is not something essential, but a more or less accidental attribute of the stimulus presentation. In such cases, the reaction seems very loosely linked to the stimulus word, and is thus differentiated from the other coadjuncts. The distance of the association is to some extent a greater one. These coadjuncts can thus be separated to a certain degree from those already alluded to. Two categories can be differentiated amongst these loosely linked coadjuncts. 1. The stimulus presentation is linked to the reaction by means of an important but accidental attribute, e.g., father, anxiety about, sorrow, play of the child, youth, war, league of peace, Bertha versus Sutner, murderer, hang, gallows, Sentence contains something. Content. Star. Romantic. Night. Romantic poetry. 2. The stimulus presentation is linked to the reaction by an unessential external quasi coexistent attribute, e.g., pencil. Long. Length. Heaven. Blue. Color. Lake. Deep. Depth. Table, peculiar form, style. These two modes of coadjunction can be termed coadjunction by inner or outer relationship. The first category includes far more important coadjuncts than the second, justifying to some extent the terms inner and outer. The coexistence of the attributes in the second category points to the origin of these coadjuncts from outer associations. As a final group of coordinations, we propose coadjuncts used as examples. 
This category contains reactions which present, in essence, nothing but the reverse of the two modes just described. Sorrow, father, viz. of the father, for example. Contents, sentence, viz. of the sentence, for example. Color, heaven, viz. of heaven, for example. Trouble, old woman, for example, an old woman has trouble. There is a series of reactions to adjectives and verbs which do not stand grammatically in a coordinate relationship to the stimulus word, but are perhaps best included in the group of coadjuncts, more especially in that of coadjuncts as example. To surrender, peaceable. To pay attention, wiser. To despise, wickedness. Strange, emigrant. To pray, piety. To help, goodness. These associations can be regarded, if the expression be allowed, as analytical. They are concepts which are already quasi-implied in the stimulus word, to which they thus stand in a kind of relationship of sub- or supraordination. As it is, however, difficult, if not impossible, to determine this relationship in concrete cases with absolute certainty, and as, moreover, the concept of whole and part is inadmissible in the case of adjectives and verbs, we include these reactions also under the coadjuncts as example. Certain typical reactions will always occur among the possible substantives. The reactions are here extremely general and internally independent of the stimulus word. The special classification of the coadjuncts would thus be as follows. 1. By common superconcept. Example of 1. Father, uncle. 2. By similarity. Example of 2. Father, God. 3. By inner relationship. Example of 3. Father, sorrow. 4. By outer relationship. Example of 4. Father, our house. 5. As example. Example of 5. To pay attention. Wiser. It is to be especially noted that this classification by no means exhausts the copious differences in the coadjuncts. In individuals who associate very largely by subjective constellations, there are possibilities of a series of coordinations which do not easily lend themselves to classification. In such cases, impotence must be frankly admitted, and one must rest content with the classification coordination. Consolation must be found in the fact that individual possibilities are incalculable, that no one scheme will ever be discovered by which all associations will be able to be classified typically and without a residue. But there are a number of coadjuncts which could without any extreme pressure be classified under different headings, i.e. they have no very distinctive character. The classification can here be left in suspense or the reaction be finally placed under that type with which it has relatively most similarity. The designations set out are not to be regarded as absolutely compulsory categories, but merely as names for empirically discovered types, which can on occasion merge into one another without sharp demarcation. More is not to be expected in the present stage of the theory of association. Beta subordination. The reaction is thought of as a part or subconcept of the stimulus word, e.g., tree, beech tree. Here we include also all those reactions which specify the stimulus word, i.e., which demonstrate special cases of the universal stimulus presentations, e.g., house, the house in X Street, horse, Mr. X's horse, station, Derby. In some cases, doubt may exist whether the association is to be taken as subordination or as predicate, e.g., food, today's, abbreviation SC, period, food. Gamma, superordination. The reaction is thought of as the whole or as the generalized concept of the stimulus word, e.g., oven, town, cat, animal. Here, likewise, the separation from predicate is often difficult, e.g., 13 unlucky number, 
Is unlucky number, in this case, a general concept, and is 13 as such included in other unlucky numbers? According to our view, it is in this case a question of a predicate. On the other hand, we should classify a Schaffenberg's association, baptism, obsolete custom, among the supraordinations. Obsolete custom is a general concept which includes many other subconcepts. Delta Contrast. The idea of contrast is intelligible without further explanation. Disproportionately difficult, on the other hand, is the classification and valuation of contrast. As a rule, contrasts are not only closely connected presentations conceptually, but they are also connected visually and, above all, verbally. There are indeed languages in which there only exists one and the same word for typical contrasts. In the beginning of speech and conscious thinking, it was no inconsiderable effort to separate contrasts verbally and conceptually. At the present day, however, this effort of thought is ready-made for us in speech. It is imparted to us in our earliest youth with the first ideas of speech, with the first songs and reading lessons. We possess extreme verbal facility for these closely connected concepts, often strengthened by reminiscences of quotations and rhymes e.g., sorrow, joy, pain, pleasure, good, bad, bitter, sweet, light, dark. Bitter sweet is even a colloquialism. For these reasons, we have classified a large number of these usual contrasts among the outer associations. We include among contrasts only those associations habitually linked together verbally. Friendly, angry, good, vicious, animal, plant, intelligence, stupidity, revenge, forgive. Despite this detailed classification of the coordinations, there are associations of this kind which cannot be classified in any subgroup. For these, there remains simply the universal term coordination, e.g. the association short silk. The stimulus word short has been taken in the sense of a proper name. The bearer of this name has a silk business, hence the reaction silk. This cannot be simple coexistence, rather the reaction is composed from a specific and a spatial coexistence, and hence is a somewhat complicated formation. As a last resource, it might be brought under the heading co-adjunction by external relationship, but without much justification. The more prudent way for the present is simply to regard such coordinations as incapable of any further explanation. The foregoing may be recapitulated in the following scheme. Alpha coadjunction. 1. By a common superconcept. 2. By similarity. 3. By inner relationship. 4. By outer relationship. Beta subordination. 1. True subordination. 2. Specific. Gamma. Superordination. Delta. Contrast. Epsilon. Coordination of undetermined quality. B. Predicate. With Aschaffenberg, we here include all judgments, attributes, and activities which in any way refer to the stimulus presentation as subject or object, summarized by Kreeplein under the term predicate relationships. The first judgments which pertain here may, following Kant, be divided into analytic and synthetic. Footnote 2. Quote, in an analytic judgment, I do not go beyond the given conception in order to arrive at some decision respecting it. If the judgment is affirmative, I predicate of the conception only that which was already cogitated in it. If negative, I merely exclude from the conception its contrary. But in synthetical judgments, I must go beyond the given conception in order to cogitate, in relation with it, something quite different from that which was cogitated in it, etc. Kant's Critique of Pure Reason, Michael John's Translation, page 117. End of footnote 2. This logical principle of classification is only of value for us insofar as in the analytic judgment a part of a concept, i.e. a predicate, is produced which was already necessarily represented in the concept. 
It, therefore, gives only that which was implicitly already present. In the synthetic judgment, something is added to the concept, which was not already necessarily included in the concept. In relation to associative work, therefore, synthetic judgment, if such an expression be allowed, stands above analytic judgment. Approaching the question practically, we find, insofar as this mode of classification can be used at all in practice, that in simple judgment reactions, the analytic judgment consists chiefly in the pointing out of a coexistent attribute perceptually evident, whilst the synthetic judgment is generally a judgment as to value, with more or less marked reference to the ego. We see here a relationship analogous to that of coadjunction by outer relationship to that of coadjunction by inner relationship. In the association pencil length, length is necessarily included in the idea, that is, it is coexistent. Whilst in father sorrow, the concept sorrow adds something new and thus effects a displacement of the concept. We should at once accept the classification of judgment reactions into analytic and synthetic were it not for a difficulty of practical importance. We do not know in individual cases whether the analytic predicate is or is not something necessarily included in the idea. The solution of this question can be only attempted when we are able to distinguish in individual cases between a concrete and a universal image. Zian opines that he is able to do this by direct questioning, even in children. We regard this method not only as extremely unsafe, but also, so far as the differentiation between a concrete and universal presentation is concerned, as extraordinarily difficult. What I name an inner presentation consists of condensations of many memory presentations, whether their manner of appearance is more concrete than universal or vice versa depends upon minimal differences in perceptual vividness. In many cases, even psychologically educated persons would be at a loss if they were obliged to distinguish whether by house roof they had imaged a particular or a universal roof. Naturally, we are far from denying the existence of general images, but in concrete cases of acoustic verbal experiments, we cannot refrain from the suspicion that the so-called universal images are merely words. They only escape the individual content because they are, as a rule, much less universal concepts than verbal motor pictures, where the other senses participate with very slight intensity. To answer the question whether a judgment is analytic or synthetic, we should require exact information as to whether the idea was universal or concrete. For example, snake green is objectively entirely synthetic, for green is not a necessity of thought in regard to a snake. But when a particular snake is thought of, green must be already implicitly present, when it would then be an analytic judgment. Apart from these considerations, there are other practical difficulties which prevent this mode of classification. In order to obtain a special classification of the predicates, we must realize their different possibilities. 1. The stimulus word is a noun, the reaction an adjective. 2. The stimulus word is an adjective, the reaction a noun. We have no grounds for separating these two cases or the other forms of predicative relationship. 1. The stimulus word is subject, the reaction its active or passive functioning. 2. The stimulus word is the active or passive functioning of the reaction. Or 3. The stimulus word is object, the reaction the activity relating thereto. 4. The stimulus word is an activity, the reaction the object thereof. Consider the first forms, the predicative connection of noun and adjective. Two main possibilities may be differentiated. Alpha, the adjective denotes an essential attribute of the stimulus image of inner import. This kind of predicate may be termed inner. Without any particular forcing, these predicates can be divided into two groups. 1. Judgment of fact, e.g., snake, green, glass, brittle, mild, spring, thirst, violent, war, bloody, Grandmother old, winter raw. 
these predicates denote certain essential and important elements of the stimulus image. Their purely objective emphasis differentiates them from the second group. 2. Judgment of value, e.g., father, good, smell, unpleasant, ride, dangerous, mountain, beautiful, book, interesting, pupil, good, soldier, brave, wood, useful, murderer, common, water, refreshing. In these reactions, the personal element stands out more or less strongly. But where the reference to the ego stands out clearly in the shape of a wish or a defense in an entirely subjective form, we can speak directly of egocentric predicates. We should, however, prefer not to separate these reactions, as an independent group, from judgments of value, for reasons which we shall give later. We include among judgments of value reactions like iron, useful metal, water, one of the most interesting of chemical bodies, scoundrel, disgrace. Judgments of value which express themselves in the form of an activity, e.g., smoke smells, apple tastes good, are best included among the predicates. Reactions where a value is not expressed but is required are also included among judgments of value. Example, good, one should be. Industrious, the pupil should be. Threaten, one should not. These reactions are not very frequent among normals. We add them merely for the sake of completeness. Beta, the adjective denotes an outer but slightly important attribute of the stimulus image, one coexistent and sensually evident. We prefer to designate this kind of predicate, outer. Tooth, protruding. Salt, granular. Shirt, blue. Tree, brown. Water, surging, etc. We estimate the predicate relationship between the adjective as stimulus word and the substantive as reaction, according to the principles just illustrated. That is, we judge green field and field green to be practically equivalent in the classification. The interjections which Aschaffenberg classifies with some reason among the predicates we have placed elsewhere, see below. A further subgroup of predicates is composed of the relations between noun and verb. Alpha, the subject relation. The noun as stimulus word or reaction is the subject of a definite activity. Resin, sticks. Hunter, shoots. To cook, mother. Beta, the object relation. Doors, open. Throat, to stitch up. To recruit, soldiers. To polish, brass. If the attribute is a stimulus word, the predicates hitherto considered are often not easily to be separated from the previously mentioned co-adjuncts as example. As decisive of the latter, we regard the obvious endeavor of the subject to find a reaction word or noun as far as possible suitable to the stimulus word and of universal validity, as in to pray, pious, to indulge, peaceable, despise, wickedness. We adjudge polish brass to the object relation, but polish bright metals to the coadjuncts as example. Associations denoting place, time, means, and purpose stand in somewhat close connection with the group of predicates, Ronchberg's association denoting purpose. Place, to go, into town. Time, eat, noon. Means, to hit, with the stick, purpose, wood, for burning. Occasionally, doubt arises in these reactions as to whether they are perhaps to be conceived as specific and belonging, therefore, to the subordination group. The differentiation is easy in the great majority of cases, and no gross error will arise. Definitions or explanations of the stimulus word, which on the whole occur very seldom, have a certain connection with the above groups. We have, therefore, included them among the predicative relationships. Examples. Doors, noun, blue, adjective, star, heavenly constellation. Predicate relationships may be thus grouped as follows. Predicative relationships. 1. Noun and adjective. Alpha, inner predicate. 1. Judgment of fact. 2. Judgment of value. 
beta, outer predicate. 2. Noun and verb. Alpha, subject relationship. Beta, object relationship. 3. Definition of time, place, means, and purpose. 4. Definition. C. Causal dependence. Munsterberg. Stimulus word and reaction are linked by a causal connection. Example. Pain, tears. To cut, pain. End of section 4. Read by Larry Dulkey, Oak Park, Illinois, September 24th, 2021.